Hi people. I've just uh, come off a pretty intense week in my life. We've got some of the best quality public land hunting I've ever had. And um, that's just very, very encouraging. Also a bit of strife that I landed myself in on the way back from a hunt, which I feel the need to, to share, just as it might be a bit of a cautionary tale for all of us. But also, guys, thanks heaps for everyone who provided good feedback just about where our deer are at in terms of antler development and the onset to the rut and things like that. Um, it seems to be very different in all regions, which is really interesting, really cool. Also a bit of a disparity between reds and fallow, which has always been the case, but only by a few weeks. I think what we're gonna see this year is a very spread out rut. That's not such a bad thing. There'll be a lot of opportunities for everyone. Anyway, folks, keep it natural, enjoy. folks I've driven out late last night to get to this patch of native timber and I love this kind of country to hunt it's it was not predicted to rain at all and it's been raining all morning uh, it's that light easterly stuff oh, sorry just protect the old lens blank it up um, but it's gonna make for fantastic stalking conditions um, fingers crossed for a for a fallow today and there might even be a chance of a red but um I've got to just map out the country a bit first and, and hopefully come midday some of this fog and stuff will have burnt off and I'll be able to get into some glass. I've got a pair of Vortex binoculars that I'm really keen to put into play, they're 10 by 42s and just been in a real glassing headspace so I really want to get into that. Anyway, let's go hunting. very just slow descent and from the few times before that I've been here this was supposed to be a game trail it's not active they're not using it that could just mean that they're holding it much lower elevations I mean, what I'm really interested in is a stack that's why I'm being very cautious when I'm higher up because right now in about February I mean I know there's been some disparity in when you know, they're coming into velvet, hardening off and all that kind of stuff, but right now they should be starting to look for hinds and getting into that rut mode. And they might not even hang out with the hinds. I want to be very quiet, sorry. But they will just want to be aware of where the mobs are and follow them and often just stay a bit higher up than them. So if I knew where there was a mob of hinds, I would be a lot more interested in like 30, 50 metres up the hill, just lying down somewhere chewing cud. That's stag shit. Now you notice how that was all clumped up in a ball. Just classic stag shit, and I've personally noticed it's mainly that way over the summer months and into the rut. You know, I don't know, you squish it together and gack it, it's, it's just different to the hinds and the, the pellets. I've seen stags with pellets too, but it's just, it's this time of year. I think it's a lot to do with what they're eating to develop their antlers. You know, they've got a higher proportion of things like clover in their diet and stuff like that to get those trace minerals they need for antler growth. Brown bush. The wind's been changing, it's been going down and back up again. I just want to say hi. That's also another way of managing scent. It's just staying out of the danger zone because you don't know what different currents are going on down there. And even if there's a little bit of a change out of your favour that goes downhill just for a little bit, it's easy to rectify when you've got some distance. I don't know, being still is very good. I just like being still. You pick up on so much stuff that goes on, but you just don't bloody well move. It's awesome.
this is where it's at. This is really what I've been looking for. Staying up high, just to work out if anything's moved into the area. In, he hasn't done that much work to it. You can see these upward pokes. It's just like getting up and out in amongst it. Initially I thought, could it be a boar? Sharpening tusks, but it's a bit high. If it was a boar, well, it'd be a fucking huge one. And that's cool. I'll hunt that boar. Oh, man. And the zone is good. Headgear on him. Holy shit, yes. Yes! He's mine. shifted. Just as I set up to go in, he moved down the hill and my approach wouldn't have worked. Be patient. I really hope the wind doesn't fuck me. But I'm going to shift myself about 50 meters down the hill, slowly, glassing as I go. He, he, he sticks out like he's orange as anything. Melted away into some thick shit. I hope he's better. Keep oh. another one, buddy.
First year of the season and not a bloody bad one. Oh, oh yes. Ah. Ain't that just a feeling? Hey, real quick shout out, Tim Murphy. You know what, 15 minutes ago, I just got a really, really nice message from you, man. And it's just, some, just, just generous of you to encourage me that way. Um, Cause it's one of those things that's so easy to just not do and you, and you did it, man. And like 15 minutes later, I pulled the trigger on that fella. Oh, thanks so much, Pharaoh. Oh, anyway, it's just the ant nest that wasn't an ant nest, finally. Cause it's always, it's like nine out of 10 orange lumps in the bush always tend to end up being one of those bloody ant nests. The conditions are perfect. The papaya juice is flowing. Oh my God, the good times. Oh, I just love the mist. I love a native Australian bush. It's not like, I, I, you know, it's not the first time that I've had a February or a, a, a late summer, summer fallow deer like that. And I guess it's just a tad easier when, you know, they're so obvious to see and they're just so orange like that. Might be a very different, different thing if it's a Zamba deer. Anyway, whatever. Not to denigrate my success, just feeling great about it. I just, I can just, it's been so wet, it's so, it's so good, it's so lush for so long. I think this is going to be a great feed. There is a gully in between me and him full of blackberry, and that's fine. Time is. Oh, I'm bad. Not too long after 12, 25 past 12. Got the rest of the day. Might go over there, spend some time with them. Have a snack. People, I'm stoked. Good times are natural today, and they always bloody are, and they always bloody should be. <sighs> so good. I, I'm not in any rush. This ground is just wet and slippery, and I just don't need to roll an ankle right now. It'll just wreck my day big time. But, oh, shit. I might even have to circle up and around a bit, but that's, that's, that's fine. Burning jungles and lush. Just how I love them. Don't need to roll an ankle right now. Can't be too far away. If I'd been on this side of the gully, would I have even seen them? I seriously doubt it. It had to be from across the other side just to get in amongst this stuff. Actually, don't know where he is. Just spotted him. I have a bit of work to do to get him out, but that's fine. I'm just... Some days it just gets so damn good. All right, legends, let's take a look. Oh, that is so cool. Wowza. Oh, damaged the front one. It's going down. Oh, sorry, there we go. Better view. Incredible. I gotta wait, yep. Magnificent! Oh. Something special. Holy shit, let me show you more of them. Let me show you more of them. That's just so good. So good. So unique. This is public land hunting, folks. I'm so stoked. I'm so pleased. Can you see how fat he is? He's so fat. He's so beautiful. Oh. Well. This is a special deer. They're all special, but this is just super special. 
Oh, I, I was just really, uh, I showed some discipline today and that's, that's paid off. Just in the sense of, you know, just not allowing myself just to be lazy and just not, I always, I followed the wind religiously. I stayed up high, I really used my glass and you know, people who watch this channel for a while would know that back in the day I struggled with that a bit. Just, well, had bad glass and just really didn't know what I was doing but just kept breaking apart this gully. Mind you, he shows himself pretty easily, doesn't he? I've already commented, but like, just so, so ginger, so orange. What a beautiful surprise. And hard velvet. And there's just some interesting action going on at the top there. And look at this. This tine has dropped down. It's, um, it's rock hard now, but obviously it's, it's had an impact when it was in soft velvet, which has damaged it and pushed it down, and it's grown that way anyway. So, yeah, that's cool. That's what I'm presuming anyway. But I think um, I think that's accurate. Bloody flies. When I've got a bit of distance ahead of me to hike this kind of thing out, um, it pays, I feel, to have a bit of a halfway point or a point where, just a, a drop off point where I could start moving legs and bits and pieces to a certain area that once I've done down here, that means that I could actually have some shorter trips from back at the truck. Um, I find that helpful. Um, particularly if, you know, something happens unexpectedly towards the end of the day and I had to come back here early in the morning to retrieve some of them or something like that, you know, just it wouldn't be going all the way back down in here um, to get it all sorted out. So, cape first. Um, I'm going to take skin all the way back to past halfway if I can um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole hind quarter off all right using this side of my swing blade knife um, it's blunt at the end there but and designed as often as a gut hook but it just has a really smooth action touch wood um, straight through the back Center here, following that black line right up to the hilt of his head there. Actually, what I'll do is I'll use the other side just to make a quick incision, just to start it off. There you go. Swing it around. Yep. One smooth move there. I'll show that more and more detail on the other side when I do it there. A lot of fat. Just basically using my hand as a dump doughy blade. Now, I'm going to continue that line all the way up to meet um, the top cut there. Just a little opening. See if you behave a bit better this time. Oh, now that's what it was designed for. And it's funny, as soon as it hits a little bit of um, fat territory, then it's, uh, it doesn't drive as well. No, there we go. Beautiful. Good line. We're getting there, folks. Sorry, a few pauses in the filming, but I just, like, it's an exhausting job. It's good to put full attention to the task sometimes, particularly when it gets a bit complicated, but not complicated anymore. So, removing this back quarter here. Now, you saw before when I was using this swing blade, how, you know, you think you should just be able to run through, and occasionally it was just getting caught on a few things. That's because I'm trying to slip it, not just underneath the skin here like that, but I'm actually trying to slip it between the skin and that little layer of membrane, sinew, fat, a bit of flesh, right? And so that's what I was just hanging on for a second. But when I actually remove this entire back quarter, this will be going all the way through into the gut sack area, strip right around. And so that's gonna hopefully just take this whole section off nice and easily. The points, the points, the two points where it's most heavily connected, which I've got to break now, is a point along the spinal cord here and basically to find this point, oh, I've got it right now. You look, I don't know, 
next time you've got a dead animal on the ground, or even a live one if it doesn't mind having its rump touched, um, feel along its spine, and you're gonna get to a point that's just behind the rib cage area where the two vertebrae are quite pronounced. And you can cut straight through that very easily. Um, just break straight on through through the sinew like that. The other point is the bunghole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little ring around the ring. Um, and I might even just tie it up with, I don't know, a little bit of a mandra bush or something like that just to keep everything inside. inside. And then I'm gonna cut this point here. And then basically when I take this and strip it all the way around, the whole thing's gonna just come off and it's gonna be one, you know, two legs over the shoulder, shoulders, backpack set up, hoik it out of here. Bob's your uncle apparently. So um, that's the theory anyway. Let's see if I can follow through. As you can probably hear, the flies are onto it quite hard now. But um, the good thing is there's that layer of fat over the top of it which has just gone absolutely rock hard. And that's um, a nice protective seal for the back straps and the other meat underneath it. Basically here, just right underneath the tail, I'm gonna make a cut. I'm just gonna cut the top part of the bum. Just cutting it around either way, from the top and the bottom. To be honest, I can't actually see any, nothing's gonna come out, so I don't think I'll even bother tying that, but you could just literally just get a bit of lamandra bush, a bit of twine, string, if you bring it with you, around it. And if you're wor worried about a whole bunch of poo coming out as it withdraws itself back into the body as I pull the rear quarter off, um, that would be a good solution to that. Oh, hang on, no. Wow. Oh, that's it, it broke. Good, good, good. Broke the spine there. Get the last few little bits of connecting tissue. Well, I'm, I don't want to take this off my shoulders just yet. It's quite a, it's very comfortable when you get the right um, sit spot on your shoulders and that's good. I just don't want to do the whole squat down and get it up again. So I'm just gonna, it's quite steep in here, but there's a, a rise. It's just about hundred meters up that way. So if I can just get it above the rise now and I'll just come back for the rest of it. Um, cape and back straps, back straps and shit. Oh, a bit tired. That's all right. It's all part of the game. Catch us shortly. Um, I forgot my game bags. <laughs> bit of a f up, isn't it? That shirt there, though. A bit of blood in it already. I think it'll do fine to the top of the hill. Looks a lot more balanced than my last load. And a lot lighter. I'm not going to rush. I mean, I do need to keep on top of things and get this cape salted, get the meat in the freezer. But um, it's also just really nice to be in the bush at, you know, close to six o'clock, sun coming down. Just love it, it's the best. Oh, happy days, folks. Yeah, folks, that's got to be one of the best hunts that I've pulled off in a while, just in terms of sheer satisfaction and plans going to plan and succeeding. It's just great feeling. For whatever reason, the itch didn't seem to be scratched that time, and there was just chunks of bush that I hadn't seen before, and I was just so attracted to that country. I knew the animals were in there, and I just wanted to go back. It had been predicted to rain, and I went anyway. And look, to be honest, for the first part of this whole trip, it paid off. I'll show you what I mean just now, when you look out on some private land to the side and see some amazing animals moving around. My fucking god. 
It's incredible. Yeah, don't need a red camera. Got a wet ass already. All right, I'm out of here. Fuck. Oh, it's all worth it though. Knew the strain was coming, but it really seemed to make the deer balls up and come out earlier. It felt secure in it. That's good. Anyway, mm. by the time I get back to the car, it's absolutely bucketing, and I just oh, want to get out of there, oh, folks. I'll just emphasise that I've been in and around state forest hunting since 2008. And for the last three and a half years or so, been working in the forestry sector. Um, you know, I feel pretty confident in these areas. I feel like I can handle myself in the bush. And I drive a lot on these kind of tracks in all kinds of conditions. And I guess that lottery ticket to disaster was in my top pocket and it finally caught up with me. Um, coming around to a corner, when I put the brakes on, next to nothing happened. And I'm just get into a bit of panic mode, smear the wheel to the left and it locks up and I flip the car over the edge of the embankment onto its side and all the shit that I'd accumulated in my car for the last two years just comes pouring on top of me. This is about 7.30 at night just as before it's getting dark in the bucketing rain. I'm alive and I'm warm because of my friends. Yeah, look, a strong part of me would just love to put that incident behind me, learn from it, um, and more than anything, thank my lucky stars because I came out of it almost scot-free without a scratch and funnily enough, minimal damage to the car. But the main reason I got out of it is because I've got two extremely good friends, being Andrew and Dale, who came all the way out there in the bucketing rain to help me and see what they could do to recover my car. And they came out the next morning again too. They're the kind of friends that you, you really want to have in your life. And I am very, very grateful, not just to call them friends, but very privileged to have them as hunting partners too. Anyway, guys, I just we don't need that kind of shit in our lives, do we? The crashes, I mean. We just don't. Um, but it's just a very timely reminder how something like that could happen. If I'd, if I'd rolled that car two metres beforehand, I would have hit a culvert, and it would be a completely different story. And I might not even be here talking to you right now. So all I'm trying to say, guys, is please be careful.
this just definitely wasn't to dissuade anyone from getting their good times natural. It's just a way of us making sure that we can keep our good times natural forever by being cautious, being safe, coming home from the hill at the end of the day. Anyway, don't worry guys, the next video won't finish on such a somber note. Anyway folks, enough rambling. Keep it natural. See you next time.